pounds of rice. Two pounds of rice. Box of dog biscuits. One box. <laughs> One box of dog biscuits. <laughs> Did I say that we needed raisins? Raisins? Mm-hmm. Yep. You planning on coming shopping with me? No. Then who's going to translate this list for Sam? Can't you read my writing? I can read it. I just don't know what it says. <laughs> One brisket of kabobbles. One basket of crab apples. Bill pens of flavor. Five pounds of flour. <laughs> Two bricks of dang brushers. Two boxes of dog biscuits. I told you, one brick of dang brushers. <laughs> you know something? The further you go in school, the worse your penmanship gets. Now you copy that over until it's readable. Yes, ma'am. Cheerfully. Yes, ma'am. Uh -huh. Mom. Billy Joe, I thought you left an hour ago. Well, the cannonball hasn't even gotten here yet, and I told Henry I'd meet him in front of the Pixley and Forum at 11 o'clock sharp. Well, Henry will wait. For anybody. <laughs> Why does the cannonball always have to be late when I'm in a hurry? Well, maybe Charlie and Floyd stopped a spike in a rail. They found one loose the other day. It's a lucky thing they were going slow. Even when they're going fast, they're going slow. <laughs> Where are they? <laughs> Feeler all the way in, Floyd. We got to get a rolling. I sure wish we could fish another ten minutes. Well, we can't. We got to pick up Billy Joe, you remember? Hey, wait a second. I didn't give you the start signal. Is that two clangs or three? Don't you remember? Of course I remember. I invented this, didn't I? You invented the clothesline? No. Oh, you invented the cowbell. Of course not. Well, then just what did you invent? I invented tying the clothesline to the cowbell so as I could signal you from the coach. That's some invention. <laughs> yeah. Well, they laughed at Alexander Graham's bell, but without it, nobody had heard the telephone ring. All right, Edison, give me the start signal. Okay. Three clangs is for stopping. That's four clangs. That's a lunch signal. Well, that'll get you stopped. <laughs> Two clangs is for starting. I know. Well, why didn't you do it? I like to see your jowls jump when you get mad. <laughs> we could move somewhere where we didn't have to depend on that dirty old unreliable old thing. Oh, now hold on, Billy Joe. All the things you say about the cannonball may be true, uh, including unreliable, except when you need it. Okay, Mom. Like the times it raced Doc Stewart out here to bring you three girls into the world. Mom, it's outlived its usefulness. As far as Doc Stewart coming out here for the purpose I just mentioned, yes. <laughs> But that whistle is still a mighty cheery sound to the folks living in this valley. Calls the kids to school, tells the farmer when he's coming to pick up its crops, and uh, hoots out good news and bad. Mom, you're just sentimental. Well, if I am, there are a lot of other folks living around here who are, too. I don't know anybody that doesn't love that little train. I hate that little train. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> I simply... Please hit it! Now, 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 now. Take it easy, Mr. Bedlow. Well, I can't help it, Doctor. I hate that train. I have nightmares about it every night. Uh -huh. Well, tell me about it. Well, it's, it's horrible. I'm sound asleep. Suddenly, I hear the cannonballs whistle. Woo! Woo! And I feel a cold wind sweeping over me. <laughs> I try to move, but I'm tied to the front of the locomotive. The track races toward me. I yell for the engineer to stop the train. Stop! Stop! But the engineer isn't running the train. It's my arch enemy, Kate Bradley. <laughs> I look ahead and I see something. The rails come loose. We're gonna crash. We're gonna crash! Stop! Stop! <laughs> Please, Mr. Bedlow. Would you mind? Oh. 
I'm sorry, Doctor. Oh, that's all right. Why do I have these nightmares? There's a very simple explanation. You want to destroy the Hooterville cannonball in Kate Bradley. Well, that's not a nightmare. Putting a cannonball out of existence is the sweetest dream of my life. Then why haven't you done it? Because the president of our railroad, Norman B. Curtis, likes the cannonball. There's a nut for you. He's threatened me with immediate dismissal and loss of my pension if I ever do it any harm. Well, there's your answer. Mm -hmm. You want to destroy the cannonball. But you know that if you do, the cannonball will destroy you. Hence, the nightmare. Well, what can I do about it? Lose your hate for that train. How? By learning to love it. <laughs> love that miserable... Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> that beautiful little train. <laughs> Keep saying over and over to yourself, I love that train. <laughs> I love that train. <laughs> You see, Kate, the reason I invented this device, I've always been worried about what would happen if I was back here and Charlie was in the cab and he had to get in touch with him if there's an emergency. Well, what kind of an emergency? Pretty hard to be specific. This whole rolling junkyard's an emergency. Something serious like a man's hat blowing out the window. Hey, that's my hand. <laughs> I says to myself, Floyd Smoot, what would you do if a thing like that happened? Stop a train. My exact words. You're gonna have to stop this train, Floyd, I said to myself. Will you stop this train? Hey, kick your hands off of that. I'm supposed to give the emergency signal. <laughs> Smoke the coach must have gone uncoupled. Get me out of this. Where's the dog? Oh, my goodness. times have I told you not to sit by an open window? Holy smoke. Floyd, Kate, come here. I want to show you something. Joe, it must have been the hand of Providence that took your hat and blew it out the window. No, it was the hand of Floyd Smoot. Not that I want to take any credit from anyone. Well, whatever it was, let's just be thankful. Amen. Now, let's get the tools out of the box and get this reel spiked, huh? I'll be back in the coach. Ain't you gonna help us? I'm a passenger. Oh, uh, you got a ticket? No. Then you ain't a passenger. Get to work. <laughs> suing the CNFW Railroad $20 for the loss of a brand new hat, but... Uncle uh, Joe, <clears throat> you paid $8 for that hat five years ago. He paid three ten years ago. Well, I never save sales slips. <laughs> uh, let's see now, where, where were we? Suing the railroad for a brand new ten-year-old hat. You ought to pay them $2 for losing that hat. You got better ones. But that was my favorite. In addition to suing you for my favorite hat, I'm suing you $4.50 for three hours of labor and a dollar and a half an hour for repairing the tracks. Labor? All you did was stand around telling Floyd and Charlie what to do. Well, I ought to ask them for more money. A foreman gets higher wages. Well, it seems to me if you're going to write any kind of a letter, it ought to be to have them replace all that old track. Yeah, we ought to make Bedlow cough up some money for that. That'd be a good way to shut the cannonball down for good. Well, somebody at that railroad ought to know what's going on or there's going to be a bad wreck. Maybe I should write a personal and private letter to the one friend the cannonball has at the CNFW. Who? The president, Norman P. Curtis. Come in. You wouldn't dare. Oh, Mr. Bedlow. I was just putting your name over Mr. Curtis's as you'd instructed me to do. I told you to make it permanent. But, Mr. Bedlow, Mr. Curtis is having only a minor operation. Well, let's not give up hope so easily. <laughs> Have you read Kate Bradley's letter? No, sir. That's addressed to Mr. Curtis, and it's marked personal and private. I don't think you should have eaten... Evans, you're not paid to think. You're paid to grovel. <laughs> uh, that's better. <laughs> well, it seems that the Hooterville branch line is in desperate need of new track. 
That's why the cannonball might be wrecked and put out of commission forever. That'd mean the economic ruin of everybody in that valley. Kate Bradley would lose the Shady Rest Hotel. Oh, sir, I bet your heart is bursting with joy. What fiendish plot are you hatching to hasten the cannonball's demise? <laughs> I'm going to save it. What? Well, heavens, you see before you the new bedlow. I'm going to write Kate Bradley and tell her she's got nothing to worry about. But I'm taking immediate action to remove that old, dangerous track. Oh, that's wonderful, sir. I'm sure it's exactly what Mr. Curtis would have done. Well, Evans, sitting behind the desk of that good man and smoking his cigars, using his electric razor, <laughs> some of his goodness must have rubbed off on me. I love that train. I love that little train. <laughs> <laughs> Keep her down, Betty Jo. Some of the worst tracks along here. I will. Floyd, keep your eye peeled for bomb track. Okay. <laughs> Betty Jo, you better be ready to big hold her if Floyd jangles. Right. You know, I better signal Mom that we got a guest for the hotel. Yeah. <laughs> Let me see that letter, Evans. It's for Mrs. Bradley. May I sit down? No. How come Bedlow opened a letter Kate sent to Curtis? Well, I told you, Mr. Curtis is sick. What up, Bedlow? <laughs> May I please sit down? Ah! Them seats is all reserved. For whom? For people that don't like Bedlow. You're lucky you even got standing room. <laughs> We found your hat. <laughs> What'll I do with these? You might try gluing them together. <laughs> And the psychiatrist told Mr. Bedlow the only way he could stop having those terrible nightmares was by learning to love that train. So he sat right down and wrote Kate a letter saying he'd fix the tracks. Yes. Ha. Huh. Uh, you know something, Uncle Joe? It's just possible that those nightmares frightened Mr. Bedlow enough to make him change. Into what? A good man. Oh, believe me, Mrs. Bradley, he loves that train. He loves that train. Loves that train. Loves that train. Bedlow's coming up the pass. What are you doing? Locking the door so he can't get in. Unlock it. But take it. Uncle Joe. If Mr. Bedlow is trying to be nice, the least we can do is meet him halfway. <laughs> And that goes for you, too. No growling, no treeing. <laughs> I mean it. <laughs> Uncle Joe, we're going to treat him nice. Kate, you're making a mistake. Hold it, boy. <laughs> Come in, Mr. Bedlow. There might be a bucket of water over that door. <laughs> Mr. Bedlow, how are you? Hmm? Fine. Good to see you, Mr. Bedlow. <laughs> Darn that Floyd and his stupid ideas. We got your room already, the finest in the house. Take Mr. Bedlow's bag up. <laughs> this, uh, this is the Shady Rest Hotel, isn't it? Of course. How come that dog out there didn't try to bite me and Mr. Carson's carried my bag and you're so happy to see me? We're giving you the red carpet treatment. You've given me that before. Only you jerked it out from under me. Now, after reading your letter and the wonderful thing you're going to do for the branch line, I figured that if it was possible for you to change, it's possible for us to change too. Yes, but... Mr. I... Evans said you love the train and if you love the train, we love you. Your favorite, chicken and dumplings for dinner. Love that train. I love that little train. Yes, I love that train. I. I caught you. 
at you, huh? Trying to steal my shoes, were you? Oh, no, sir. I was going to shine them for you and, and put them back inside. It was going to be a surprise. Yes, I imagine it be quite a surprise to put on those shoes and find them filled with cold mush. <laughs> Mr. Bedlow, I was going to shine them. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, why would you do a nice thing like that for me? Because you're going to do such a nice thing for the people of this valley by repairing the track. Mr. Bedlow, you're a nice man. Well, we love I... that train. Love that train. <laughs> <laughs> Reverend, aren't you going to eat breakfast? Oh, I haven't got time. If you don't mind, I'd like to borrow your handcar to go into Hooterville to send this telegram for Mr. Bedlow. Oh, yes. Let me see that. Uncle Joe! He's not borrowing our handcar to do Bedlow's dirty work. Take a look at this, Kate. Road Superintendent, CNFW Railroad. Dispatch track gang to Hooterville immediately to begin track work. Homer Bedlow. Pretty slick, huh? Where's the other telegram? What other one? The one you're really going to send, telling him to ignore the first one which you didn't send because Bedlow knew I'd get a look at this. <laughs> Mr. Carson, this is the only telegram Mr. Bedlow's sending. I should think it would convince you of his intentions. You don't have to convince me of Bedlow's intentions. I know what they are. He wants to get rid of the train and turn this whole valley into a depressed area. <laughs> Uncle Joe. Suspicion is the root of all evil. Well, it ain't like him to do nothing for us. And it ain't like you to be taken in by him, Kate. After all the things you said about Mr. Bedlow, you're going to feel mighty small when he proves you're wrong. Well, maybe so. But until he does, I ain't getting mayor for no size six suit. <laughs> Mr. Bedlow, breakfast in bed. Breakfast in bed? Can I come in? Huh? Yeah, I suppose so. Good morning, Mr. Bedlow. What's all this about? Oh, we always do this for our special guests when we really like them. <laughs> Thank you. And if there's anything else you need, you just holler. <laughs> went into town. You were wrong about Bedlow. Evans did send that telegram, just like I said he would. You mean the other one? What other one? The one he sent telling him to ignore the first one because he didn't send... No, the one Evans showed you about sending for the track gang. Well, that one. Well, I thought that was the one you thought he wouldn't send. That was the one I let you think I thought he wasn't going to send. Then you knew that Bedlow was on the level all the time. Well, of course. The minute he walked into the hotel, I knew he was a changed man. I don't understand why I didn't think so, too. You owe me an apology. You owe him one, too. Mrs. Bradley. While I was shaving, somebody stole my suit. And that's it. I was pressing it for you. Mr. Bedlow, there ain't nothing we wouldn't do to make you feel at home. You didn't burn a hole in it? Mr. Bedlow, suspicion is the root of all evil. We like you. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Now, see here, Mrs. Bradley, what are you trying to do to me? From the moment I walked in here, there's been one intolerable thing after another. Courtesy, kindness, consideration. No man can only stand so much fiendish torture. Now, you lay your cards on the table, and I'll lay mine on the table. All right. I've been gaslighting you into revealing what you're really up to. Very well. I issued an order to have the old tracks removed. With never a thought of replacing them with new ones. Right. Well. Certainly glad we understand each other again. Now I really feel at home. Hey, I told you this miserable cuss was up to no good. Sending them phony telegrams. But I thought you wanted me to think that you thought... Kate, when you're wrong, admit you're wrong. <laughs> All right, Bedlow. What's your next dirty move? Now, uh, when that track gang gets here tomorrow, they're going to start pulling up the tracks, and the Hooterville cannonball will never run again. I hate that train. I hate that little train! Just a minute, Homer. Sam went up to the county seat, got the judge to issue this little paper. It's an injunction preventing you from touching those tracks. Oh. County Superior Court, eh? Mm -hmm. Well, Mrs. Bradley, knowing what a worthy adversary you are, I had the foresight to go to the state Supreme Court and have them issue an injunction against your injunction. I'll see you tomorrow when they start pulling up the first track. <laughs> Any 
anybody know why I could sell a second-hand conductor's uniform? It was second-hand when you bought it. <laughs> Charlie, I'm never going to get to drive the cannonball again. There, there, honey. Love that train. Love that train. <laughs> Love that train. <laughs> You've lost your nice little smile, haven't you? Ah. What's everybody so glum about? I've helped put dozens of small branch lines out of business. You'll get over it. You'll soon move away to another desolate area and find new ways to eke out a miserable existence. There's no cause for despair. At least we'll be able to sleep at night. I'll sleep. But you'll get one of those nightmares again. Why don't you just pack up and leave? When the last rusty rail is removed. Mr. Bedlow, I wish I had put cold mush in your shoes. <laughs> it just isn't right for the cannonball to stop running without folks getting a chance to say goodbye to her. Isn't it usual for canceled railroads to have some kind of a last run? Yeah, folks snip up the seats for souvenirs and take pictures. How can we have a last run if Mr. Bedlow's going to start tearing up the tracks tomorrow morning? Oh, well, I could postpone the destruction long enough for that. Don't do us any favors, Bedlow. Uh, I, I, I think that's a nice gesture. If there's one thing I'm not, it's a sore winner. If you like, you can bring your camera and snap pictures. Yes, I could record the passing of a revolting piece of Americana. And we'll see to it that you get the picture-taking place of honor. <laughs> Let me go! Let me go! Ooh, that's hot! You ought to get some pretty good pictures of the broken rail from up here, Homer. Yeah, we just hope you're around to see them develop. Mrs. Bradley, you can't frighten me. I know. But in case we do and you change your mind about fixing the track, just uh, jingle me in the cab and I'll stop if I can. You! I'm the engineer. <laughs> Let me go! Let me go! Mrs. Bradley, stop this train! <laughs> That's what Mr. Evans said I did in Homer's nightmare. <laughs> Slow down. No need to worry about this stretch of track. Sound as a dollar. Of course, Bedlow don't know that. Help! Help! Stop the train! Stop the train! You gonna fix the track? I promise! I promise! <laughs> You better stop her, Charlie. Oh, let's bluff him a little longer. Yeah. No, 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 we can't bluff much longer. Take a look. Holy smoke. <laughs> it's a good thing Mr. Curtis got out of the hospital in time to back Mom up. And make Mr. Bedlow back down. Yeah, Mr. Curtis sure got us some fast action. I wonder how long it'll take the track gang to repair all that rickety track. Well, all told, there's about 20 miles it needs going over, but we got a good foreman on the job. Swing that hammer, John Henry. <laughs> now, faster, Bedlow. Yeah, to this tempo. I love that train. I love that train. Junction. This has been a Filmways presentation.